All right, welcome to this episode of Lectures with Lyddington. Um, we are going to move on to our second category of macromolecules or biomolecules, and that is lipids. Lipids are also known as fats. So if you're looking at nutrition labels or something like that, um, lipids would be called, we don't call them lipids um, when we um, talk about them uh, as far as food, but when we talk about them in the sense of science, structurally, they're called lipids. Um, and their most essential job is long-term energy storage. This is why, um, you know, you put a little fat on the hips, right? Because you're trying to store that energy for usage later. That's why when you have too many fats, you might start to put on a little weight. And that's because those extra fats that you're eating are getting put away into storage for your body to access later. Um, and, and sometimes those fat stores, um, those storage of lipids will actually be beneficial. Um, some structural components are made up of lipids. Um, your cell membranes. So this is a picture over here of a cell membrane. And each one of these is what's called a phospholipid. Oops. So every single cell in your body has a cell membrane that is made up of phospholipids, which are a specific type of lipid. So it's obviously very important. It's in all of your cells. Um, it can also aid in different body parts um, for protection or insulation. Think about um, animals um, that live in the wild, right? In very cold areas like the Arctic, for example, um, you have a polar bear. Polar bears have a lot of fat stores. Um, lipids and they are there so that in those times where they can't find a lot of food their body can take that energy from that stored lipids um, below the skin etc um, to, to help them but that also keeps them warm right having that extra insulation is a good thing um, it's there's a certain amount of lipid um, in between your organs inside your body and it's there to help protect those organs um, from friction um, by being bumped up against other organs um, along your nerve cells there's a whole coating made up of lipids um, it's called myelin and that myelin is there to help the message get sent from the where the message is going or coming from down to where it's going whether it's from your brain down to your hand to say ah don't touch um that myelin is there to help send that signal so there are a lot of really important uses um of lipids within the body but the number one main uh, job is that long-term energy storage so we talked about monomers and polymers with macromolecules. Lipids are kind of funny in the sense that they don't truly have a monomer that you can repetitively put little pieces together to make a polymer. Um, they do have pieces that you put together to make them, but it doesn't have that repetition quality that other molecules, other macromolecules have. Um, so there's technically no monomer and there's technically no polymer. The polymer is the lipid, and the monomer is a glycerol um, and then fatty acid chains that are attached. Um, they also are only composed of CHO, C-H-O, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So when I said glycerol and those fatty acid chains, here's what that looks like. So every lipid has that, that glycerol at the top and then three places where it can share a bond with a fatty acid chain. So there are different types of fatty acid chains that could be attached there. So you can put different pieces in, but you're gonna start with a glycerol and then you're gonna pop in different chains um, attached to those three um, hydrogens off of that glycerol. So, the thing with lipids um, that they're a little bit different is that they are non-polar. Remember, if something is non-polar, it's going to be hydro 
hydrophobic, right? It's hydrophobic, so it's not going to dissolve in water, right? If you pour olive oil into a cup of water, it will separate. It will repel away. Sure, it'll pour down into the center, but then the little bubbles will move to the top and it will separate away. So there are lots of different varieties of lipids um, and the different structures will have different functions, but ultimately they're all going to be nonpolar. Different uh, types of lipids that we can encounter, um, fats, oils, and waxes are different categories. Um, fats are the ones that we think of the most when we think of lipids, right? Things like butter or you know, bacon has a lot of fat in it. Any sort of meat um, could potentially have a decent amount of fat in it. Um, oils, things like olive oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, any of those kinds of things. Um, and they, uh, another grouping um, is waxes, things like candles, right? Candle wax uh, is a type of lipid. Uh, you don't want to eat it. <laughs> um, you could eat fats and oils. You don't want to eat your candles, um, but it is a type of lipid. Um, and uh, Waxes for um, things like surfboards um, would be a, a type of lipid as well. Another uh, delineation of fat. So I talked about the glycerol and then fatty acid chains that would attach to it. There are different types of fatty acid chains based off of how those carbons are bonded together. You've probably heard these terms before, saturated and unsaturated fats. And saturated fats, what that means is it's saturated with hydrogens. So it's full of hydrogens. Notice every single carbon that's not attached, every time it's not attached to another carbon, boom, it's attached to a hydrogen. And what happens is these are all going to be completely straight. So they will all stack really, really well. And what happens with that is when they stack really well, they end up being solid at room temperature. Now this solid, um, being solid, this quality of being solid at room temperature is tough on your body. Because they stack together, they squish together and they can get stuck in places like your arteries. So this is a type of fat that you wanna be really careful uh, not to have too much of because you can end up with different diseases um, because of all that fat sticking together in places that it really just doesn't belong. In unsaturated fats, we have at least one double bond. And what that does is it bends it. So it creates a bend in the chain. And now they don't stack as nice. And because they don't stack as nice, they are going to be liquid at room temperature. This is incredibly important because think of oil, right? So you've got some vegetable oil. You can pour it out. It'll go from the bottle into the cup that you're pouring it into. It can move really easily. Well, it's going to do the same thing inside your body, in your arteries. So if it can flow and move, it's not going to get stuck inside you. So it's not going to cause all those health issues that, you, that a saturated fat might cause. So with a saturated fat, all single bonds, straight chain, stacks. Unsaturated fats, we've got at least one double bond. So we've got to bend and things don't stack is nice, allows it to be fluid, less of an issue for you health-wise. So that's it for now. Let's practice.